So uh, I'm Veronica Bakanova. I'm a, a physician scientist. I'm an associate professor at the University of Minnesota, uh, the blood and marrow transplant program and cell therapy program. And I work in developing a new clinical trials, uh, usually early phase clinical trials for patients with hematologic malignancies. I also chair the lymphoma myeloma program there and um, we uh, would like to share the news about opening a brand new clinical trial for the refractory myeloma. Uh, this is a, a phase uh, one, two clinical trial, early stage clinical trial, early phase clinical trial, uh, which is uh, designed to help patients who become refractory to chemotherapy and uh, small molecules. It's using cellular therapies uh, derived from the donors. Uh, these special cells are called natural killer cells. They are collected from the related donor and these NK cells have ability to recognize and kill cancer in the patient's body. Um, the NK cells are combined with the antibody, ilotuzumab, and that combination is particularly uh, useful because it targets myeloma cells specifically and then we combine it with the IL-2 which is a cytokine which helps these cells to grow and expand in patient's body and what is unique about this clinical trial is that the NK cells which we are using have been uh, grown in laboratory outside of patient's body for about two weeks and in this process they turn into cells which have a better ability to migrate into the tumors. They are uh, easy to home to myeloma sites. They persist better, they are more resi resilient and they also um, we hope they are going to have a stronger or more powerful anti-myeloma activity. This uh, product which they are uh, grown with it's called NEM and that's a, a unique way to grow NK cells in vitro to uh, improve their function. These NK cells are collected from the relative and uh, the reason for that is, is because the immune system of a patient typically is exhausted and unable to uh, propagate the anti-tumor uh, effect so the uh, donor NK cells are uh, stronger and more powerful to really do the job. Uh, we, uh, the donors can be anybody from age of 12 above and they are tested for tissue typing but they, don't, they do not have to match. In fact, the matching is not really relevant in this study. So you're just looking at the strength of the immune system. So I just did a, um, an article with somebody that talked about donor transplant in the aloes transplant setting and they were saying um, more than the importance of a match was the importance of the strength of the donor's immune system, so it was better to do a younger um, donor than it was to get a perfect HLA match. Is that that's kind of similar in this situation? It's similar in a way, exactly. We are looking for a younger donor. Typically, we would uh, suggest to use either younger siblings or children for older patients. Uh, but we are still learning whether doing older donor actually matters. This is a very early stage in development, so this is to be seen. Um, in, a, uh, in contrast to transplant, where your stem cells persist lifelong, these cells only stay in a body for a short period of time. Um, and uh, that's a time when they are exerting the entire anti-tumor effect. Uh, the study also have the portion of a maintenance for those patients who are um, in remission or are benefiting from therapy. They can continue with the ilotuzumab um, for uh, a long duration of time. The question of what antibody to combine uh, the NK cells with is a very good one. Uh, there are a number of antibodies being developed uh, in a myeloma space. The daratumab uh, is very potent, but for our purposes, uh, there is a disadvantage of our daratumumab. It is uh, a target, its target is CD38, which is expressed on NK cells. There is some evidence that, in fact, Dara can uh, eliminate some NK cells from the patient's body. Uh, it's a direct uh, antibody against the myeloma target, but it can reduce or destroy the NK cells. So we have done some preclinical work and decided that Artumab, that Artumab is not our uh, best uh, 
antibody to combine with, as opposed to ilatuzumab, which um, in fact is uh, its target is SLAM7 and it's expressed on NK cells as well as on myeloma cells. On myeloma cells, it has a targeted uh, antagonistic uh, property. In NK cells, in fact, it has a stimulating property. So it actually activates NK cells in addition to binding them and uh, mediating the NK cells directed killing. So we hope that it's going to be a good combination. We launched a study in a, a early winter 2017. The study has two phases. Phase one is a dose escalation using uh, three levels of NK cells dose. We are uh, beginning a second uh, level, so we are at phase one component of a study. Uh, the study is also uh, in fact open for lymphoma patients. We are combining with rituximab there, so we have uh, two parallel cohorts and uh, it's in a very early stage. So far we have uh, um, observed uh, a sa good safety profile and um, are open to enrollment. So it is important to think about uh, where the study fits in the, the entire uh, landscape of anti-myeloma therapies. The study certainly is uh, fairly complex, involves the donor, it uh, is uh, uh, complicated in a way, uh, but it's safe uh, and uh, the uh, there are several things we uh, patients should think about or their providers should think about uh, when they study maybe on a horizon. Prior ilotuzumab would be an exclusion. Uh, the patients have to have measurable disease, so um, if they have uh, one area which has been radiated, that no longer will make them eligible. Um, the patient should not have a CNS disease or, or any involvement of the uh, spinal fluid, which is rare in myeloma. But that's pretty much it. It's very open in, in inclusion criteria. And the idea is to have it available for patients who are uh, relapsed uh, multiple after multiple therapies, relapsed after autologous transplant, and do not uh, feel they are candidates for our genetic transplant and uh, do not wish to proceed that route. Uh, it can be a bridge to allograft, though. For for example, some patients who really have no other good options, it can be used as a, another uh, therapy which uh, will bring a remission and which can be followed by, for example, allogenic transplantation, which is more curative. This therapy uh, would be considered um, to bring about the um, remission, but not uh, certainly curative on its own. Uh, we also can consider in patients who are intolerant to some other um, anti-myeloma therapies. And uh, as a part of the inclusion, they have to fail uh, one of the emits and one of the proteasome inhibitors. So clearly this is not for early uh, disease patients, but more for advanced myeloma. They also need to be pretty healthy with a good organ function.